Hi, English 1301 students, it's Dr. Murray. I'm making this video to talk to you about the response section of your summary and response of Mr. Death essay. So, we've talked about the, uh, we've talked about the summary, um, or you've watched my video in which I discuss the summary. Um, the summary of the essay, or the summary section of the essay is five paragraphs long. I also said it was about two pages long, double-spaced, or at the most two and a half pages. It should not go beyond two and a half. Try to get it even shorter than that if, if you can. Um, you know from the assignment sheet for the summary and response essay that the response is going to be at least three pa double spaced pages long. Um, and I think I, on there I say three to four. The truth is you can go beyond four if you want for the response. You know, some of you might be like beyond four in just the response section, I, I assure you I've had some students who have wanted to write more and have written, you know, five, six pages for the, just the response section. You don't have to. You can write a perfectly acceptable three to four page response section if you go about it, you know, somewhat the right way. And the right way is part of what I'm going to try to describe in this video. But because... You know, you'll have five paragraphs and roughly two pages uh, for the summary, then you know you're going to have more than five paragraphs for the response. Um, I can't tell you exactly how many paragraphs you will have because it depends how much you want to write, or another way of saying it is it depends what claims you make and how many body paragraphs it's going to take for you to support those claims. So. In the summary, I tell you precisely how many paragraphs I want. In the response, it's up to you. I mean, you're still going to have an introduction, more than three body paragraphs, and a conclusion. But the question is just, is it going to be four? Is it going to be five? Is it going to be six body paragraphs? You get to decide. You don't want anything that's just unnecessary material. Um, so, so don't just go on, you know, um, yammering away make sure you're talking about things that are relevant to the claims you make. Or if you're talking about interesting things in your body and paragraph and you go, but I didn't make a claim about that. Maybe you need to incorporate a claim that you didn't initially incorporate so that what you're talking about in the body paragraph is relevant. But I shouldn't read a thesis of the response section and then encounter material in the body of the response section that has nothing to do with the thesis, right? So let's back up the response section. You're going to have an introduction. As with the introduction of your summary, your introduction in your response section is going to end with your thesis statement. If, you, if you're like going, well, what do I talk about? Turn to page two of my assignment sheet for the summary and response essay, and near the top, I list a bunch of questions you could sort of answer for, to, to write a thesis for the response section. One question is, what kind of a man is Leuchter? Well, you couldn't have an opinion in the summary of the essay, but now you you not only can have an opinion, I want you to have an opinion. So how would you describe what kind of guy Leuchter is? Um, that's, that's one thing you could do. The next question I ask is, how do you explain his participation in the Ernst Zundel trial? And I would add to that, I don't have it on the sheet here, but I could add to that, and his involvement in neo-Nazi conferences and rallies because it wasn't just a one-time thing. He continued to be involved with neo-Nazi activities, movements, um, you know, etc. for years. Um, so how do you explain that? Why did he do that is another way of saying it. Um, then another question I ask is, what do you think of the criticisms of Leuchter included in the film, particularly from James Roth, the chemist, and Van Pelt, the um, historian. I think it would be a very good idea to be well acquainted with precisely what they say because this is the very, they are bringing the logos. They are showing us precisely why their claims are true and their claims are that Fred's claims are completely wrong. Um, and Fred doesn't bring anything like the kind of specific evidence, nor does he have the expertise that they have. Um, 
so that's very important that you're familiar with that evidence. And I think it would make sense to, to, to address those two critics of Leuchter in your essay and not just name them, but specifically what do they say? Um, then I ask how, how logical are Leuchter's arguments or observations in the film? That's clearly connected to the, to the previous question. And then the last question I ask here is what lessons are to be learned from the film? This is certainly the kind of territory you want to get into in your conclusion of your, um, of your response section. You know, what lessons to be learned for the film? What are the implications of, of, of Fred's actions? Or why is it important to study a movie like Mr. Death? You know, um, how can the lessons we've learned... I mean, you'd have to first state what those lessons are, but once you've stated what the lessons are, how can the lessons we've learned from this film be applied in other areas of life? Or, or do you see um, phenomena like what Leuchter did manifesting elsewhere in culture, in our culture? Um, you know, you have some leeway, but this is the kind of stuff, you know, why is this important? Um, what lessons are to be learned. This is the kind of reflection that goes on in your conclusion. Okay, so again, back to the introduction of the response section. How many claims do you make? You're probably going to make more than one because I give you a bunch of questions here to think about, um, but they're all going to be related. So maybe say something about Fred Leuchter, Fred Leuchter's claims or his involvement with um, the Zundel trial. The question also remains, why did he do what he did? And how do we know that he's wrong? So come up with a thesis where you answer one or two or three of those questions. And, and that will let you know where you're going in the body of your essay. Okay, I don't have as simple a structure for you for the response part of your essay than I did for the summary. The summary I gave you this very formulaic way to proceed. In this one, I'm backing off and letting you figure out how to organize it a little more. You still have to have a very clear thesis, you've got to have clear topic sentences announcing the focus of each body paragraph. Every one of those topic sentences needs to be connected to your thesis in some way. Um, but that's, that's what you need to do. What do you do in the lead in of your introduction in the response section? Well, don't summarize the film. Don't, don't start talking to the reader as if, hey, have you heard about this film called Mr. Death, it was directed by Errol Morris. You, you've already acquainted the reader with that. So what could you do instead? Well, one thing is you're going to end your uh, summary by talking about the issues that are raised. So that will be what's lingering in the mind of the reader. So it would be time perhaps to start addressing that certain important questions were raised and you could start to talk about that. Another thing you could do is you don't always have to speak generally, but you could, for instance, choose an interesting or very telling scene from the film and begin the lead-in of your response section. Or, or you could either describe a telling scene or, or you could choose a very important quote. Now, one very important quote or in a way it's two because there are two people talking in this conversation that I've talked about in, uh, is, is this moment in the movie where Errol Morris asks Fred Leuchter, have you ever considered that you might be wrong? And Leuchter responds, no, I'm past all that. I think it's a crucial moment in the movie. I think there's a reason Errol Morris included his voice there when he does not include his voice anywhere else in the film. And I think it's because, you know, we're, he knows we're approaching the end of the film and he's going, I need to make it clear that I'm not going to let him get out of this movie without being challenged about whether he's considered that he's been wrong. And I think Fred's answer is very telling. Um, I could talk more about it, but I'm actually more interested in hearing what you have to say about it. Like, why does he answer that way? What does his answer mean? 
Um, so I guess what I'm saying is strategy could be to either find an interesting quote or a scene and describe it and have it lead into talking about, you know, Leuchter's choices, Leuchter's attitude, what kind of a guy he is in a way that might lead into your thesis. Um, that's, that's using specifics of like describing a scene using a quote and then commenting on it and having it lead into your thesis. Um, but there are other, you could approach it in a more general way and begin talking about, you know, the issues raised by the film um, and have it lead into a discussion that that eventually leads into your thesis. But I, I think it's pretty interesting to bring up some well-chosen specifics, whether in the form of describing a scene or, or, um, or a quote that's very telling, and use that as a springboard to begin discussing your reaction or, or you know, another example that just popped into my head is when Fred Leuchter is addressing um, a group of people at one of those neo-Nazi conferences and he says, I hope my talk lived up to your expectations and, you know, I just really believe in standing up for the truth and all this stuff. And people burst into enthusiastic applause and Fred's just standing there and he gets this big smile on his face and it looks to me like a little kid who, who just did a trick and everybody's clapping for him and he's getting attention. And I feel in a way like it's a moment, and this is my perception, not everybody might perceive it this exact way, but it's my perception that inside, Fred is kind of a little kid who never quite got attention. And that all this stuff he's gotten into, despite the fact that it's not true, it's gotten him a lot of attention, applause, praise. The great Fred Leuchter, um, you know, Zundel says he's like George Washington and all this stuff. So there's, there's a big payoff for him to do this stuff. And if you were going to argue in, in part of your thesis that part of the reason he's driven... And part of the reason he's unwilling to consider whether or not he's been wrong is that he's very insecure and all this implause serves his emotional needs, which is a terrible reason to, to, to spew heinous lies, right? Or heinous untruths. I mean, I, I shouldn't change it to an Orwellian euphemism like untruths, but I guess lies implies that Leuchter knows for a fact, I think on some level he knows what he's saying isn't true, but I can't prove that. But I think that's probably the case. Because I, the reason I think that is because if he was so certain, he would be less unwilling to look to look at it, to consider the evidence. Um, have you ever considered you might be wrong? Yes, I have, and I'm looking at the evidence here again. No, he's not willing to do that. Why? Because on some level I think he suspects he might have been wrong. Um, but all of that is to say, um, you want to make sure what you do in your lead-in fits with what you're going to say in your thesis. But there's no perfect formula. These are just some strategies I'm giving you. When you get to the body paragraphs of your response section, you want to make sure you have clear, general topic sentences that announce what the focus of that paragraph is then get right to giving us evidence in the form of describing a scene, presenting a quote, something that will support what you're saying. Then you need to analyze that evidence. You need to, to explain what it means, what it shows us. And that's the sort of cycle you go through in a body paragraph. Claim, evidence, analysis, and explanation. Okay, Do that for each of your body paragraphs. And then when you get to your conclusion, you revisit your thesis statement that you had at the end of your introduction. But then beyond revisiting your thesis, this is where you get into, why is all this important? Why, why did we bother watching this movie several times? Why are we writing a paper about it? What's to be learned from it? What's to be taken away from it? What other situations like this arise that we should understand and know how to deal with in some way or be ready to criticize the people who 
do things like what Fred Leuchter did. Okay, I'm going to leave it there. I hope that helps. I'll see you soon.